Good morning everyone and welcome back to Craft Eccentricity. It's Tuesday and that means it's Tutorial Tuesday. Let's see what fun we can get up with today. So over the weekend I didn't actually show you I had some fun with a 3D embossing folder. This has got nothing to do with today's tutorial. I just wanted to show you. So on HSN they have this Sizzix uh, free pack of 3D embossing folders and also a Christmas die. So for 20 bucks plus shipping, I thought that was really, really good. So this is the design in the folder and I do have virtually all of Sizzix and Tim Holtz's 3D embossing folders because I absolutely love them. But anyway, as I was saying, I had some fun over the weekend and I also, with that, used some of my BB Craft Abalone Crystals. They're really, really pretty. Oh, the camera's working. <laughs> That's a good sign. And I also use my Surprise Creation Notched Rectangles. And anyway, very quickly, this, this is what I made. I hope that you can see that. I embossed it into acetate. Let's see how close we can get. And then I put crystals onto the embossing. So that you can see like in the center of the star there and there's like little dots on the embossing folder where you can actually see but listen to that it sounds like one of those rain sticks doesn't it but i just wanted to share it with you because i thought it was a great buy and it's such a pretty pretty design Whee! i just love it let's see how close we can go there you go I'll be quiet while I show you. I've just got some great, great details. And it's nice to make big shakers. So I just thought I would show you that anyway. Right, now we're getting down to the tutorial. And it is KS Craft. And it's the door, um, porch door, that everybody wanted to see last week. Last week, if you remember... We almost had disasters doing the door, but it wasn't too bad. And today it's this die, which is an easel die. And you've got embossing for the brickwork and what have you there. It does come with a door. I'm going to get all the pieces out. This needs cutting apart. And I'm going to quickly show you actually how to do that. What you do when you get a die like that, put it down on a flat surface. You don't want to cut yourself. And then twist there you go there's one piece out now these have got to be snipped out and then you've got another framing piece in here so twist and that piece is out now you can see these little bits we're just going to trim those off with a pair of cutters and you can do the same here just twist so that whole piece has come out you're left with one of these bits here. I'm not actually sure what that's called, but go in there with your um, tweezers. I like to go underneath and grip and twist because you wouldn't want to stand on that if it fell into the carpet. I've actually got carpet on my craft room uh, floor and my husband has been saying to me for a very long time, we're going to do your craft room. And I'm saying, no, 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 don't touch it. I love it just the way it is, you know. I know where everything is. I love all my my clutter, as he calls it. But I know where everything is. So to me, it's just not cluttered at all. So when that eventually gets done, I'm going to put down what's known as rhino flooring, which is almost a wood effect panelling, but it's really thick vinyl so that I can just sort of like vacuum, mop, whatever it is that I need to do to get my glitter off instead of uh, constantly getting the vacuum out for the, the carpet. So anyway, you've got little niblets here and I hope they're not going to flick onto the camera. And you just get your cutters on there and you just snip. These bits need to come out and I will say, hold on to your bits when you're cutting because if they fly off, you're not likely to find them again, especially if you've got as much stuff as I have. So we've got that bit there and because of this I will remove the sharp ends there. See what I mean about them flying away? 
and I'm going to remove that sharp end there. I'm going to leave those connected like that because there's nothing there that's going to hurt me and I'm not going to lose them because they're connected together. It doesn't bother me if I have to cut them twice but because it's a bow you're likely to cut them all in the same colour so you might as well just keep them together so you know where they are. Right, here's my other sharp bit. I've just found that I cut off, so I'm just going to put that off to the side. Now, my colour scheme for today, I've seen people make these and they've done them in traditional colours. So I'm going to go with something different. And this is my colour scheme for today. As you can see, I've got a bit of fluff on my paper. I'm going to get that away. And I've got that pink piece that's left from my shaker. So I'm going to use that. I've got some gold foil and there's a good view of my camera. I'm using cream and I'm using that green. And I have got a bit of stripe paper that has these colours in. And if I feel like doing something with that, I might do it. But first of all, I'm off to cut this out of some of this and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've done some die cutting and I've cut two backs in white cardstock. These are the parts that make the easel die and you can see I've done my backer in white I've done my brick wall in cream I'm going to try and pick these up without dropping them get my finger under there and you can see I've cut two lots of bows don't want to be all blood oh there we go I've got a letter box but because this is attached I managed to cut out two but that's not a problem. You've got little um, circle bits that go in the bows. Cut those four times. I've cut two wreaths and I've cut two swags. Now, when you make an easel card, you need a stop for it. Um, sort of like when you're folding it up, you don't want it to slide back out on you. So I'm going to use one of my faux leather gold stars that I got from AliExpress. And I'm also going to put some little baubles on my wreath and on my swag. And they're just going to be pink sequins. These are the matte, um, not mass, they're solid colour. That's what they're called. And uh, I also get these from AliExpress. So everything's tying in, but it's not traditional, sort of like red and green. I'm going for cream, the pale green and the pink. Right, I just need to run away for a second because my dog is waiting for his breakfast well they all are actually I've got three of them so I'll be back in a second okay so doggies are fed and happy and while I was away I cut the long piece off that one which is this bit and I've just scored and folded that up so that this will attach onto here like that but it'll attach along this line. So I'm just going to pop some tape on. And uh, I've got various tapes on my desk today. So I'm just going to do that. Last time I made an easel card, I'm trying to move everything into camera here. I actually forgot to score it. <laughs> so I didn't forget today, but that doesn't mean we're not going to have a disaster. So stay tuned. <laughs> Right, so I've got my tape on and I'm just going to go over this again because you do want your card to kind of like be as flat as possible. And now onto here goes this piece. So let's take the tape off and that will be our easel background all done. Now make sure you've got your nicest piece of card facing you and that all of your edges are matching up. Let's have a look. I think that's it. Pop that down. And then if we go sideways, that's what it will look like. And your card will bend up and you're going to need a stop here, which is why I'm going to use a gold star down there because as you can see, that will stop it from completely falling forward and then it goes down and it folds flat to go in your envelope. I have done um, another easel card tutorial which was Nicole's snow globe. Um, so if you need any more hints or tips you can certainly go and look at that one. 
and that will be in the surprise creation collection of videos so if you actually click on my name below craft eccentricity then click on videos you'll see all the different categories come up and uh, I categorize them by the actual uh, store name so if you're looking for anything in particular that's the way to do it and then of course we need to make this panel which is going to go on top of here now I know I've seen some people um, I'm just going to move my gold bits and find my pickup tool to uh, not lose these little round bits gone quiet for a second and this is my letterbox and I'll go back to what I was saying and that is that I've seen some people who are layering the door on top um, my personal preference as you can see is my door is going to go behind let's get them bits of wreath out so you can actually do it one of two ways you've got this decorative plinth on top of the door and you can lay it that way or you can go underneath and do it that way I'm actually going to prefer to do it underneath so that's the way that I'm going to do it but first of all it's an open closed door now I'm not sure if I'm going to put a little image or something behind there so I'm going to think about that so while I'm thinking about it I'm going to bend the door so that the door will open now it's quite delicate so I would suggest teasing it between your thumb and finger to find that score line first of all because you don't want to put any you know sort of like massive creases into it and I'm trying to get a door that's going to open truly so here goes find that score line and you can't go all the way up it so you're going to crease your window there I think I've got that and then I'm going to lie it down carefully and just in this area I'm going to just gently go over it with my tool here just crease that line and then I'm hoping when I flip it over and smooth that out this area is going to be glued underneath and my door is going to open nicely so when that goes over there like that I'm going to be running tape down that strip there tape down this strip and popping that onto there so make sure that I line it up so that my door will open and close right now I'm thinking as I said and I haven't decided yet I think I'm going to stamp something behind there I'm thinking on it <laughs> right first thing to do is to glue this door into position so I'm going to flip that over I can basically see the outline here of where I need to put my glue and as you know I like to use Dollar Tree glue and I'm going to go right to the edge because it's only um, a narrow piece of door frame so I don't need to go all over the place with it I'm going to need some here I'm just going to go up there and then I'm going to go around the edge of this window light I don't actually know if it's called a window light or a transom might be a transom I don't know tell me below because you know how forgetful I am right so I've just creased that bit up and I'm going to position this where I think it's going to go and while the glue is still wet I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to wiggle it around so if I vanish a little bit away from the camera you have to forgive me because we need to make sure that it's down enough so that that door is going to open well I can see that that is opening but you don't want that below there let's open that out make sure it's even 
might actually need to trim a little bit of my door frame off. But as I say, you know, it's entirely up to you which way round you do it. I just want to see my window coming through my brick. Excuse me while I just run off and get some kitchen paper. Okay, did that because I managed to get glue all over myself. And as you can see, the door will open. I've got two little hang bits here that I'm going to trim off with my scissors. Because as I said, I know that people are layering it over. I just wanted to do it like that. And I did actually cut a little bit of pink cloud in case I wanted to put pink cloud up there. But I'm deciding I'm going to stick with that. But first of all, um, I need my glue to dry. And then I'm just going to go straight across the bottom with the guillotine to uh, take off my overhang because I've decided to go that way around instead of laying it over the top. So if you lay it over the top, <laughs> you don't have to go through all this. But as I say, you know, this is the way that I decided to do it. Right, I'm going to let that dry and I'll be right back. Right, that's nice and dry and I have trimmed off my little bit of overhang there and as you can see my door opens and uh, I will do a close-up of this after and I'm still deciding whether I'm going to stick something in there and I'm kind of looking around and thinking about it and I'm thinking about what about an image or something I don't know well maybe I'll just leave it plain so that I can just stamp a sentiment later yeah, I think I'll leave it plain so that I can uh, stamp some words behind there. That's what I will do. Maybe I can put a sticker. I don't know. It's one of those things, isn't it, when you start creating. You lose yourself. Right, next up is I've cut two of these. And these are the swags that will go above the door. And I've also decided to change the sequence that I'm using and go for something smaller. So I'm going to use the rhombus on the swag and on the wreath because I think it's more sort of like to scale. And you can see all the lovely pretty colours in there. So that's what I'm going to be using on my swag and my wreath. But I'm still going to be using a gold star as the stop. So I think that will tie in nicely. So I'll get that one out now. Right, so... I've got some foam and I need to cut it up and I'm going to put it between these two pieces, these two pieces and I'll be back. Right, so I've got my foam in and I'll show you that. Just three pieces on that so that I can curl that up if I want to and just slightly offset the reef there so that you can see that it's dimensional. And I'm going to have that in the middle of my door and then the swag is going to go up there like that. That's how I think I'm going to have it. And then, of course, I've got my little gold letterbox. And I've got two large bows, which I'm going to put either end of the swag. And I'm going to double up the little one to go on the wreath. Now, I've got my rhombus here, which I think are more to scale. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do those bows and do my wreath. And I've decided... I want that that way around because there's just a little bit of offset and I hope that you can see clearly because my camera doesn't do so well when it's all grey outside. So first of all applying the bows and I know that you can't go within the inside of this wreath on these because that will impede the door opening so think about that as you position um, your bows. So if you go like that, you're not going to open your door. So I would suggest keeping it just like that so that you're off on the edge and the little tail is just on the inside of that bit there. And I've just done that completely wrong. So I'll flip that over to try. It was the large one that was supposed to go down. So there we are. We're hanging off the edge just a little bit and making sure that these tails are not going to interfere with the door opening. So there you can see the little bows there. 
So they're hanging off this edge, but they're within your little um, swag area there. I'm just going to press those down. Just touch down. There we go. And we've got the little centers here. Now you can use a bit of crystal or you can use these. And I'm deciding, I think I'm just going to go plain for a change. How's that? So got a little bit of glue down here. If you ever get glue um, onto foil cardstock and it looks an absolute mess on you, let it dry and then just take an eraser like this one and just rub over it. Just do it very gently and it should all pop off for you. So here's my little bow center and those are going in there. I'm going to try and pick that up so you can have a good look at it. There you go. I've got the centers in the bows. See, I've got a little bit of glue sticking out. As I say, don't worry about it. Use a little bit of eraser if it looks an absolute mess. And then on this one, I want to go for a double layered bow. And that's already got some glue on it. So I'm quite happy to just stick that down right there. And because that's hanging down the door, it's not going to be in the way of anything. And then more there. I'm just going to stick another one straight down on top. Only glued it in the middle because you can fluff the sides up if you want to. Dimension is always a great thing on cards. It just gives them interest. And then people will sit there when they appreciate handmade things for hours wondering how on earth did you do that? It's one of the great things about handmade. Right, now then I need to put tape all around my panel at the back while this is drying so that I can stick it down onto the white one underneath. So I'll put my tape on and I'll be straight back. Okay, so I've done that and you can see that I've also run some tape along the edges of the door so that anybody who likes to play around with their cards is going to be able to do that and it, it's not going to tear or buckle the card. So we're going to get this tape off now and we're going to position it evenly, I hope, within that panel. And I'm standing up, so if I'm yelling into my mic, I do apologise. And I do actually have a confession to make, which um, not a lot of people know, and that is that I'm actually deaf, so... If my voice goes up and down ever, um, it's because I can't really hear um, high-pitched tones. I can hear bass notes, but, you know, of what use and point is that to anyone? <laughs> so, if I ever yell, that's why. And I've got that positioned right there. There's my little door. I may not be even. In fact, I'm not even. So when you do it, make sure you're even. And now this piece can go over onto our easel, which is here. And it can layer up onto here now. And you've got even more of a border. So it's like you've got a double white edge. So it's possible that you could cut one in a really fancy paper. And then it's going to go down like that so I need to put more tape on here and I'll be right back right so I've got the tape onto the back of this one but before I do that I want to glue my little letterbox down so I'm going to decide where it's going to go and then I'm just going to put a little bit of glue here once again sorry if I'm shouting I'm standing up I have to say, one of my saviours is my dogs, because when anything is happening, um, all three of them come and tell me. So I always kind of like know what's going on. Even if I'm burning the dinner, they'll come and tell me. Which doesn't happen very often. Nope. Because I'm actually a chef by trade. <laughs> That's what I used to do. Right, so... 
the letterbox is on and I think that just looks really really cute and I think I'm going to yeah I'm going to stick this onto the panel and then I'm going to sequin those up with the rhombus because I decided that the others were just too big and uh, one of the things I like to do when making cards is try and scale stuff otherwise it can look really odd so I just get the backs off all of that and then let's see how accurate I can be with this that's it and that's really sturdy it's, you can hear that that's really solid that's uh, really nice and then as I said you know my my gold star is going to go there to stop that from falling down but let's uh, put some pretty stuff on here I'm going to sit down again I'm going to slide my chair under which makes the camera and everything else go wobbly Right, now how am I going to get my rhombus on? That's the thing. And I don't know if I want to use huge amounts of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a squiggle of glue down there. Just a little touch there, a little touch there. And then I'm going to go and pipe it just down the middle so that I can still see my green I'm going to pop my finger on that bit and I'm going to dot this one so that it looks a little bit different I hope well, I think that's enough dots on there and I will pick it up and show it to you I need a sheet of cardstock and I've got some yellow here hopefully you'll be able to see a bit better now and you can see I've got my glue on. Let's see if I can bring the camera down. Oh, that's better. And now I'm just going to sprinkle some rhombus onto there. And I tend to treat it just like glitter so that um, it's all thick. And I can just push it down in my hands to make sure that it's adhered. Isn't that wonderful? I'd just like to go around the whole house and just scatter sequins all over the floor. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm just going to gently tap with my finger to make sure that some of those have made contact right and I've got no glue on my fingers and that's a good sign and then I'm just going to grab it by the edge there and give it a tap and those are the sequins that we've got stuck to our swag and I just think that's real pretty and now we've got to dig out our little tiny wreath and there it is just enough with a couple of bits stuck there but they will tap off right I do need to give these just a few seconds to dry there it is oh it's a nice close-up and I'll be back Right, so hopefully those are dried long enough and I'm just going to pick the wreath up and get my glue bottle again and I'm going to just squirt a little bit of glue onto the back of it see that and I'm going to pop it down on the door now I want it just under my letterbox whoops lost a sequin push that down let's grab that off of there and I'm going to put glue onto the back of here just hold it very carefully and I'm only going to go into the center because I don't want it squeezing out all over the place and then my doors open which is good making sure that I'm staying within that cream frame there I'm just going to push that up a bit close the door make sure that's even and I think that that is give it a gentle press 
didn't lose any sequins, so that's good. I'm just going to let that dry and then we'll pop the star on. Okay, so I'm hoping that they're dry and I'm just going to use some glue dots here. These are the permanent ones and I'm just going to pop a few of those onto my star. These are really good and permanent. So I've like got four onto there. And then I'm just going to lift my card and decide kind of like at what point you want it to fall to. And it's always a good idea, I think, to uh, because they're padded, they're already doing most of the work for you. And that will do. And there is the easel door. I hope that you can see that. I'm going to pick it up anyway, just to show you. It's just really pretty and pastel. It's just something a little bit different if you don't like to do traditional colours for Christmas. And those rhombus, I mean, I've got loads of favourite sequins, but when these arrived, <laughs> <laughs> they went to number one on my list and I've actually just bought some more from the same seller I will link these below and I've purchased them in white because I wanted them for Christmas cards and snow globes and also in a gorgeous pale lemon and gold reflecting off them which uh, are probably going to be very nice for spring as well as putting on your cupcakes because these are my go-to for donuts and cupcakes but um, just look at that. Isn't that pretty? There it is from the side and the back. And I'm going to stand it up again. Hopefully you can see it. And I will take a photograph that should be at the beginning of this video. But I really do hope that you enjoyed that tutorial. I've got a little bit of black fluff there, which is going to drive me nuts. That's gone. There we go. And I appreciate all of you coming to watch these every Tuesday. I really do. I try to keep them as short as possible. But, you know, I start digressing and one thing leads to another. But um, not too bad a tutorial today. There were no disasters. And that door opens and it closes. Right. You have an absolutely fantastic day. I'm up tomorrow and I'll be up on Thursday with MX Art Project Shares from the haul yesterday and then on Friday I have a DIY Art Bin haul and a project share. You have an absolutely fabulous day as usual. All links below. Bye.